Bioluminescence, both the production and emission of light from a living organism, is an incredible phenomenon both to study and observe, and has been well documented in a range of genera, well over 700 plus, with the vast majority being found in the oceans. Among the animals that possess said features, bioluminescence can be used for a variety of functions, including communication, orientation, and even in prey detection and or avoidance. Among vertebrates, bioluminescence has been noted to evolve both in ray fins and cartilaginous fishes, and has done so repeatedly and in a range of genera. The lesser, comprising sharks, have also been noted to exhibit some form of bioluminescence, with up to 10% of the 540 plus described species being known to do so, and more examples continue to be found, something which is often unknown of and overlooked. It can occur in a variety of ways, with true bioluminescence coming from light-producing chemicals which different species use in different ways, as mentioned earlier. This is a separate and therefore different process from the similarly named biofluorescence, in which blue light hits the surface of an animal and is then re-emitted as a different colour, although this phenomenon is just as interesting. In sharks, bioluminescence comes from a chemical reaction that occurs either within specialised cells, these being known as photogenic cells or photocytes, which are often embedded in organs called photophores, which can reach a high degree of sophistication, including light guides, reflectors, and even optical lenses, utilising hormones to control their light emission. To better understand this, and how their ability to glow impacts them and their behaviour, their functionality was examined by a study in 2019 for the first time in two lantern shark species, being the southern and black belly lantern sharks, as well as the kite fin shark off of the coast of New Zealand. The study was conducted off the coast of New Zealand near the Chasm Rise, where a subtropical front is created by the continental shelf, where warmer, subtropical and colder subantarctic waters meet, with this leading to a nutrient-rich mix, which creates ideal conditions for plankton and the animals that feed on them, supporting a great diversity of marine life. Both Kiwi and Belgian researchers collected specimens as bycatch from a Hoki trawl survey by the research vessel Tangaroa with them being caught from depths of up to 200 to 1,000 metres down in the ocean's twilight zone. After their capture and nets, the researchers place them in a seawater tank, and then take them to a dark room to watch for any signs of bioluminescence in order to better understand them. As a result of either stress or shyness, only a handful of the animals formed into their blue-green glow for the researchers, with those that did having their skin sampled for further analysis. After the results were collected, it was found that all three of these animals likely exhibited a trick known as counter-illumination, where they can hide their silhouettes from predators lurking below by producing enough lights to match their surroundings, with this being evident from them all having large concentrations of photocytes on their undersides. Of the three animals assessed, the kite fin sharks were among the most notable, with them also being known to be the largest known of luminescent vertebrates, at about 180 centimetres or 6 feet in length. Interesting to note, however, is that they are few to no predators. An analysis of their swimming speed found that they had one of the slowest crude swimming speeds ever measured in sharks, although they are capable of a high burst capability, indicative of an ambushing lifestyle. Two hypotheses have been proposed which may explain their ventral luminescence, with the first being that they may use their photophores to illuminate the ocean floor while searching and hunting for prey, or to stealthily approach towards them using their counter-illumination as camouflage. The principle of counter-illumination would be used to serve as a predation tool instead of as an avoidance mechanism, a hypothesis already proposed for cookie cutter sharks, which are also known to be bioluminescent. However, to validate this requires more observations and behavioural studies to come to a more well-supported conclusion. Signals to warn off predators, recognition among their own species, as well as creating a counter to the lights coming in from above for self-camouflage, have also been proposed to varying degrees. As well as this study, Another lantern shark, being the velvet belly lantern shark, found in the deep waters of the Atlantic Ocean and Mediterranean Sea, and like the previously mentioned sharks, are also bioluminescent, although they employ it in a unique manner. This lantern shark species has two spines, one in front of each dorsal fin, and just behind them carry two rows of photophores that illuminate the spines, meaning that they are invisible from below, but indeed very visible from their dorsal side. It was found that from visual modelling experiments, potential predators could see their emitted lights from about a few metres away, which wouldn't give them much of a chance of making an escape. However, their prey would only be able to see the spines once they were just one or two metres away, which would mean that they could better sneak up on them, which is unusual indeed in that these animals were both using their lights to both hide and advertise themselves at the same time, which is quite paradoxical. 
A conclusion was reached that the spines were acting as a beacon to illuminate the threatening spines, which would make it the first such use of bioluminescence for any kind of fish. The spines themselves are mineralized, which means that said lights can also be shined through them, which is very rare indeed, having only been observed in organisms like barrel live fish and marine snail, Hynia brasiliana. Said bioluminescence and its application is however still quite poorly understood, as is much of shark behaviour and habits, so there is still a great deal to be discovered and understood. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.